The deformation gradient is a fundamental quantity in continuum mechanics that is used to build up a lot of the kinematic uh, analysis machinery that is used. And so it, it most basically is defined as the gradient of the deformation map. So if we, we'll, we'll use the symbol phi uh, for the deformation map. If we take its gradient, then that's defined to be f. So written in another way, it's just the partial derivative of phi with respect to capital X. So the the, the coordinates of the reference positions of the material points. If we expand that in, out initially, f is a second order tensor, so it has two indices. We'll say fij, and it's equal to the derivative of phi i with respect to xj. And sometimes people, instead of writing phi i, they'll write little xi derivative with respect to big xj. So these, this is just the definition. So we have the main definition, is which, is, which is that it's the gradient of the deformation map, and then initially uh, we have these alternate expressions, which are very useful when you have to do calculations, if you need numbers and things like that. Now, since F is a tensor, and we know that tensors are mathematical objects that take in vectors and produce vectors, it's good to have a, a good physical grasp of what the deformation gradient actually means. In other words, what kinds of vectors does it act on and what types of vectors does it produce? And to understand that construction, what I want to do is think of a body B, which deforms to a new body BT with a deformation map phi. And what I want to do is I want to consider two material points, capital XA and capital XB, and the vector that joins them, which I'm going to call capital DX. And each one of those points is going to move to a new point, little XA and little XB, and there'll be a new vector that joins the deformed points, and that'll be D little x. And I want to do a little bit of a construction here with these vectors and these points to see how the deformation map fits in to this structure here. And I've, I've, I've prefixed these two vectors, d capital X and d little x, with a d because I want you to think that at some point this vector is going to get short. Okay, So that's the setup. So first let me write out d little x. That's just simply the difference between little xb and little xa. And I can write little xb as big xb plus the displacement vector u evaluated at xb. And then I can write minus little xa as minus big xa plus u evaluated at big xa. So u is just simply the displacement. And now I can rearrange terms a little bit. Big xb minus big xa is d big x. So I have this term here. And then I just have the two displacement terms. So I have the dis difference in the displacements between the two points, big XB and big XA. So let me do a little bit of manipulation now on those last two terms there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to note that capital XB is equal to capital XA plus DX. So that's nothing but the construction that I've placed above. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Taylor series expansion on this displacement here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand uh, u of xa plus dx about the point xa. And so if I do that, I'll have u of xa as the first term. And then I'm going to have the first derivative of u times the difference. So that'll be the gradient of u evaluated at xa applied to dx. And then there'll also be higher order terms, quadratic, cubic, etc. But I'm not going to worry about those because I'm going to take a limit as the size of dx goes to 0. And then there is this minus u xa here, which goes along for the ride. And you can see that one is going to cancel with the first u xa. And so what I'm left with, if I drop the higher order terms, will be that d little x is approximately equal to the identity plus the gradient of u acting on d big x. So now we can see something that 
looks like a tensor acting on a vector gives me a new vector. And we'll, let's look at what that tensor is in the square brackets there. So if I note that f is the gradient of phi, I can also write that as the gradient of big X plus u, right? Because little x is equal to big X plus u. That's just the definition of displacement. And, and phi itself is going to give me little x. So I can replace phi here by little x. And then I can replace little x by big X plus u. So I arrive at this relationship here. And the gradient of x with respect to x is just the identity. So what I'm left with is f is equal to the identity plus the derivative of u with respect to big X. So I can identify then what's in the square brackets here as f. So what I find as a final result is that d little x is equal to f d big X in the limit as the norm of d big X goes to zero. If, if I'm looking at finite lengths of material, then this will be an approximation, which gets better as the size of the vector gets smaller. But in, in the limit, it's actually an exact expression here.